Am I live? Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Student Advocacy Day. It's so nice to see everyone. Um, just to make sure everyone can see me, can everyone just uh, really quickly in the chat just say a good morning? I see everyone's been um, saying where they're from. It's so nice to see everyone. Um, I know I've been emailing a couple of you back and forth, so I'm really excited to have the opportunity uh, to see everyone today. And I just want to first start off by saying welcome to our first virtual student advocacy day. This is really exciting. I hope we all have a really wonderful day and happy social work month. Um, yesterday, Chris started off by having wonderful discussions on um, social work and the role we play in democracy. And it's really exciting that we had those discussions yesterday. And today we all get the chance to really put that into practice and engage in the democratic process. Um, so good luck to everyone who's doing that today. Um, just a few things. I know a lot of us are probably using Hopin for the first time. So I want to quickly go over um, how Hopin works so that we can be as comfortable as we can with this online platform. <laughs> Um, so obviously on the left, you can see reception, stage, sessions, networking, and expo. So each of these different areas will lead you to a different part of the event. So right now, everyone should be on the main stage where um, the speakers will be speaking. Um, and in the reception, you'll see a schedule of the day. So if any point you're wondering what's going on, you can refer to the schedule to see who's speaking where. Um, and then on the left, we also have sessions. So for anyone who was not connected with a congressional office, and for that we do apologize if you were not able to be connected with the congressional office, we tried our best. Um, but if you were not connected with someone, we have um, substitute advocacy sessions for you where you can go on the left during sessions and from 1 to 3 p.m. We have social workers who have been working in the political field for years available for you to still practice lobbying and get that experience that um, you saw from this event. Um, and then uh, networking, this is one of the most exciting features of Hopin. It's sort of like a speed dating feature, but networking and more professional where you have three minutes and you get to just meet with anyone who's attending this event, quickly chat. If you're interested to continue talking more, you have an option to extend that conversation. If you feel like you aren't connecting, you can just uh, leave the queue and then uh, get matched with someone else from the event. This is really exciting. And one of the best features about this event has always been the networking part. So we hope that you can really join us from four to five for this networking session. And then Expo is sort of like our virtual booth um, where we actually have two uh, New York City Council candidates, Trisha Shimamura and Abigail Martin, who are currently running for elected office within New York City. And today you will get the chance to meet with them and ask them questions about how it is like to be running for office, what's it like to be a social worker running for office. And if you want to help them out with their campaigns, you'll have the option to do so. Um, they're not live now. They will be live from 1 to 4 p.m. today. So that's just a quick overview of Hopin. If you have any questions, we do have a booth open for um, questions about Hopin as well. And a, a member from our student leadership team will be available for you to help out um, if you have any questions. And uh, I hope I'm not speaking too fast. If you do have any questions, pop them in the chat. I hope I can see and I'll be trying to answer them as best as I can. Um, and with the technical parts aside, I just want to really just thank everyone for taking the time today to join us. Um, I really do hope we all have a really great experience today. In the past, it's been in person. I know the experience won't be the same, but the student leadership team has really tried their best to replicate this experience as best as we can. Um, and from that, I we have a video from Congresswoman Karen Bass, who wasn't able to make it with us today, but she did want to send her regards. So we will be sharing that video shortly. Um, Vincent, can you share that video? I'm not sure if uh, Vincent will be able to share that video. Hopefully we can share it later. Um, if not, we can just move on. And then when we get the chance, we'll show the video to everyone. But she did want to send her regards and welcome all everyone here who's a social worker um, to just engage in the democratic process and just welcome everyone uh, today. And now I have the honor of introducing um, an incredible social worker and a poet, Benjamin Awusu, who is a BSW student at Stony Brook University, and he will be presenting a poem today. 
Thank you, Notion. Thank you um, for such a wonderful introduction. Um, oh man, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Good morning, everyone. Um, it is an honor to, you know, perform for the annual Student Advocacy Day uh, for 2021. Um, so, you know, this piece is titled A Letter. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. Um, stay tuned. Hold on. My screen just disappeared. You know, this this whole online stuff, you know. Uh, let's see. All right. You guys ready? Can I get a thumbs up? Can I get a thumbs up? All right. <laughs> okay. So this piece is titled A Letter. Dear future son and daughter, I have to tell you about the most historic year that I lived through. 2020. And no, I'm not talking about perfect vision. There was a world pandemic. Can you believe it? A world pandemic, a disease, a virus that killed many, COVID-19 and racism. I couldn't even tell the difference. I know only God pulled me through this far. This year should have been in the Guinness World Records as I watched the COVID numbers spike, as I watched black bodies body down, bruised brutally and buried, it was unbelievable. Can you believe it? Our breed was gasping for breath. He died breathless. A black woman's body ate for rest. Then eight blue bullets startled her to death. I couldn't believe it. What's funny is that George Floyd had COVID-19 and Breonna Taylor was fighting it. In this system, racism is the concrete you walk on. It's so embedded into our souls that a world pandemic knew the symptoms of what black people have been facing for about 400 years until now. As our people were chained, shackles around ankles, bleeding, whips were whipped with bits of our flesh residue until bullets became our last name. A world pandemic knew the symptoms that our people have been facing for about 400 years until now. We had fever and chills from the endless rounds of whips and guns. As we were close to death, there was a shortness of breath. Fatigue plagued our bodies as we witnessed the capital insurrection. If there were our complexion, it would have been a black genocide. Our muscles and body ate as we watched our people become food for the soil. I lost my taste and smell. I couldn't sleep for days. As the blood of my people crept up in the depths of the cracks in America, we had a headache as our brains could process no more. And our throat was sore from the constant movement of our lips explaining police brutality that we thought was brutally clear. Our nose was running. It's our soul cried tears it hasn't cried before. COVID-19 just stole the symptoms that our people have been facing for about 400 years until now. And you're probably wondering, Papa, why are you telling us this? Well, I'm telling you this because this is the only true history you will probably ever get about 2020. McGraw-Hill sure won't mention it. So I need your undivided attention in this world of grave division. It took the death of our Khan to unite us together. We had to die for the world to recognize evil and peace. That's how much our blood means to this country. This is like the Christ effect. It united so we are the true state. So my precious daughter and son, know that your value on this earth is worth more than a million stars, planets, and the earth combined. I love you so much. Hold on to God and your blackness as if it's your last breath because you are worth it. But I wish I could say this face to face to you right now, but I can't face you right now. I refuse to see the tears flow down off of your precious faces right now as I tell you about the terror that this country faces right now. I love you so much. Celebrate your blackness. You only have one month to do so. 
So I leave it in your hands to make it too. Because you too are the future. Love, Dad. Thank you. That was incredible, Benjamin. And thank you for sharing that poem, your emotions, that vulnerability. It was really just like snaps finger. And what a true testament to just the realities of living in America, being black, and be, like uh, living in this society. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing the space with us today. Um, so that was Benjamin Owusu. He's he's a student at Stony Brook. Shout out to him. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and now I'm going to let Nat take over where she'll be giving us an overview of today. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Notion. Um, so just a quick overview of what we'll be doing today. I think Notion did a pretty good job earlier explaining some of the stuff um, or some of the events. But in a few minutes, uh, I'll be uh, introducing Dr. Charles E. Lewis, um, where he'll uh, in be introducing uh, Luisa Lopez, our, our keynote speaker. Um, and then we'll be ending with a with another um, poem by Shirley. Um, and then throughout the day, we'll be ha we'll, uh, Chris will be hosting different events. Um, so on the main stage, uh, you can find different events like the social media raid, uh, can social work save democracy, what is political social work, um, and debriefing sessions. Um, so I know Notion said that uh, Chris was trying really hard or, to connect as many students um, with congressional with different congressional offices. Um, unfortunately, not everyone will be able to meet with a representative, uh, but if so if you're not meeting with, with the representative, um, we do have different advocacy sessions available. Um, so you can meet with Dr. Lewis, Angelique Day, Justin Hodge, Janie Jeffers, Megan Cornish, and uh, Charles Brown. Um, please, we welcome you to lobby for any bills you wish. Uh, on the welcome packet, we have uh, HR 127 and HR 40. Uh, but if there's another bill that you think is more important to you, then please feel free to um, do so. Um, and yeah, Notion, do you want to jump in if I missed anything? No, I think you did wonderful. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to link uh, a website where we have all the schedules laid out for everyone. That way you can refer to this as well. Um, so the main stage overview is laid out there and then the separate advocacy sessions and the description is also laid out there. Um, and I just wanna welcome Dr. Lewis uh, to this stage. Can you join us please? I think we should give it a second for Dr. Lewis to join us. Um, I'll go ahead and jump off so Dr. Lewis can get on, but um, Bye. Hi, everyone. Um, and uh, welcome to our virtual uh, student advocacy day. As uh, others have said, we wish that it we could be on the hill today, as we as we usually are gathering uh, on uh, with, you know, on the hill. But the way things are, we have to uh, do it virtually. But we're gonna have a good day. We're gonna have a good day. Uh, it's been a challenge putting this together, but no, Notion has done a remarkable job. Uh, we wish we had more, we were hoping to get more uh, uh, offices to cooperate, but it's very difficult because it's what's going on on the Hill. I guess we all know what's been happening in terms of the uh, uh, the relief package being passed yesterday and looking forward to the president signing it tomorrow. But because of all that activity, those offices, you know, have been really, really busy. So 
What we're hoping to do today is uh, we've got some other people who have been on the Hill. They may not, they're not on the Hill now. I was on the Hill for a while. I was the deputy chief of staff for uh, uh, Congressman Ed Towns. And uh, I will be available to you um, all day. You know, so I, I will be in a booth somewhere. And if you want to talk to me, I'll be looking forward to talking to you about what what your uh, aspirations are in terms of operating in this space. And uh, now we're going to hear from a, uh, a remarkable social worker, uh, Luisa Lopez. And you know, and and I don't have your bio in front of me, Louisa. So I I know I know she graduated from NYU, uh, school of social work, and she uh, um, was most recent. Her her job now is in the uh, Manhattan Borough President's Office, where I believe you're in charge of digital advocacy, reaching out. Uh, 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 spreading the message to our, all the constituents of Manhattan. And prior to that, uh, she was the chief of staff for the New York City Council. And she's also the president, I believe, of uh, the Latino Social Workers Association. She'll tell you a lot more. I, uh, things are a little, uh, we're trying to get things all really ready for you to really enjoy this day. So I'm gonna bring on Lisa uh, to have a few words today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I want to begin by, by thanking Dr. Lewis and the Congressional Research Institute for Social Work and Policy for all the incredible and necessary work that they are doing to elevate the social work profession. I am so honored to share this virtual space with the future the future of our profession, which is all of you. Uh, and, I, and I thank you, Do uh, Charles, for, for creating a space where the importance of social workers to our society and our democracy can be emphasized. I also wanna give a very warm thank you to the organizers of Student Advocacy Day, Notion Hawk, and the rest of the leadership team for taking on the gargantuan responsibility of putting together such a robust and well thought out program and advocacy opportunities. Finally, I want to thank all of the speakers, elected officials and advocates for generously sharing your knowledge, your experiences, your wisdom on our profession. Your participation underscores how vital and essential social workers are in addressing many of society's challenges. So Dr. Lewis didn't have my bio in front of him. That's cool. <laughs> um, my name is Luisa Lopez. And just like you, I am a social worker. I have other titles. I serve my city as director of digital media at the Manhattan Borough President's Office. I serve my community of fellow Latinx social workers and by extension, all those that they serve as the president of the Latino Social Work Coalition and Scholarship Fund. I serve my community where I live as an advocate for civic engagement and increased resources for vulnerable populations. And finally, I serve my family as a daughter, as a sister, and as a wife. Do you see a theme here? <laughs> Service is the number one value from which all other social work values are derived. As social workers, we regularly elevate the needs of others above our own personal interests and use our skills and knowledge from what we've learned in school and what being in the field has taught us to help people. Service is what elevates our profession above all others in that our primary goals are twofold, to help those in need and to solve social problems. So why is this important? When I first began my journey in social work as a direct service provider, I didn't fully understand how intimately connected the concept of service is to every single thing that we do as social workers. It didn't occur to me that in my job as a caseworker, connecting families to community resources, I was also addressing deep structural inequalities in my little corner of New York City. I was just doing the job. As I learned more and connected the dots between what happens at the micro level and how that vital work in our communities is tied to what seemed to me at the time to be abstract things like 
funding, like policy, like legislative advocacy. I realized that by engaging in this work, that by supporting families with health benefits, with Metro cards, with wraparound services, I was trying to lift an entire community from poverty. I was engaging in an act of servant leadership. As I went through social work school, I did my field placements and came to my very own advocacy day on the Hill, which was incredible. I learned about how social workers can shape policy, can lobby for change, and can advocate for entire communities at the highest level, and that this too is service. Does anybody know what the six values that inform our ethic principles are? I'm gonna look over in the other screen and see in the chat. If you know them, drop them in the chat. Okay. Service, if you go back and look, is the first one listed. For social workers, identifying inequality and leading efforts to correct the imbalances affecting marginalized individuals and populations can mean many things, such as protecting children from parental abuse, uncovering elder neglect in senior care facilities, such as what's unfolding in New York State right now, or eradicating racial inequality across our nation. There is a reason why social justice, the dignity of people, the importance of human relationships, integrity and competence are listed after service. Our job is to promote human rights and to expose injustice in the communities we work in. And to do that, a dedication to service must be at the core of all that we do. So why are you here? And what does service have to do with it? It is an extraordinary time to be a social worker. And it is an even more extraordinary time to come into the profession with an interest in government and policy. For the past few years, being a social worker at any level has been a challenge. From working closely with clients in vulnerable communities, with organizations whose funding have been cut, or with lawmakers who are attempting to craft and pass legislation to alleviate these burdens, We've seen how policies at all levels of government deeply affect the communities that social workers engage with every day. In just the last few years, we've experienced the following. Attempts to radically shift who has access to affordable health care. The organized separation of immigrant families at the border. The continual underfunding of the social safety net for the poor and working class the systemic stripping of formalized protections for the LGBTQ community, the fostering of an environment that is so dangerous and toxic to black Americans and to black trans women in particular, that they are being murdered at astronomical percentages. The COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated these challenges and brought to the forefront how vital it is to have a social worker at the decision-making tables where these problems are being addressed. What this means, as you enter this field and find yourselves in spaces where these challenges are, are discussed, is that you have a responsibility to not stay silent about the issues that matter. Your servant leadership calls you to do more than to be a bystander when injustice is in your wake. We have all learned a variety of culturally humble and diverse ways to advocate for the issues to organize around causes that stir our souls, to research and to articulate and to write, and in my case, to use social media as the tools that will pave the way to a future that is actively anti-racist, actively anti-misogynist, actively anti-homophobic and anti-transphobic, and that is inclusive for all. Now this may feel all very overwhelming and how can it not? <laughs> Uh, the world is in our collective social work shoulders. So we're going to take a breath. Let's take a breath together. Everyone take one big breath in and out. This might seem like an overwhelming job, but you shouldn't be worried. Look to the folks on the picture, on, on to the square on the left of your picture. Now look to the square on the right of your picture. Every single one of you is here because there is something that you want to fix in this world. Every single person on this call right now knows that the best way to impact the world is to fight 
to bring grand structural change to the issues that we thought were impossible to address. Our community has our back. The person who would be sitting next to you if we were in person has your back. The person who would be sitting to the right of you if we were in person has your back. The social workers that are doing this work already in government, in policy development, have your back. And together we will change the world. In closing, I like to leave folks with a little bit of advice, both my own and what I receive on a daily basis from, from my social work tribe in, in government and policy. So here are just a few pointers. From Erica Sandoval, president of NASW New York City, know that you are more. If you, are, if you think that you are just a micro-focused social worker, think of all the interactions you have with people how you listen, how you respond. You are a macro social worker with incredible micro skills, and now you are more. From Maria Lizardo, Executive Director at NIMIC, it is time to be bold, it is time to demand, and it is time to use our voices to say that enough is enough. From Trisha Shimamora, who you'll be hearing from a little bit later, candidate for New York City Council District 5, you belong in these fields, and there are many of us here waiting for you to help change the world and give a voice to those who need it most. From Athena Moore, candidate for New York City Council District 9. Never doubt the impact that one act of kindness, one gesture of compassion, one step of faith can make in the lives of others. You make the difference. Just showing up and bringing your full selves to everything you do, whether it's policy, programs, or services. It is more than enough. And finally, a little bit of wisdom from me. Social work can be many things, and there are many different ways to practice it. But the source of that service should always be consideration, compassion, and benevolence. That is the way to shift minds and to move hearts and to change the world. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your advocacy day. I urge you to reflect on what you've learned, what you can bring to those advocacy spaces, and how you can best be of service to your communities, to your fellow social workers, and to yourselves. I hope that every single day you stand in the mirror and remind yourselves how miraculous, how amazing, and how gifted you are to want to be part of such an incredible profession. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Louisa. I just first want to say that was inspirational, that was validating, that was um, like a refresher to anyone who maybe felt like they were lost in what they can do. The quotes you shared were powerful. I mean, just if I could like give an like applaud, like an encore, like that was really amazing. And I know you had shared that like, like it's been a while since you spoke in front of everyone, but that was incredible, like inspirational to the core, Louisa, amazing. So thank you so much for sharing the space with us today, um, sharing these gems. I see everyone in the chat um, agreeing with me and I really have to say you dropped some beautiful gems. Those quotes were an amazing addition to your speech and just, um, like this is this was really great. Thank you so much, Louisa. And I know you have a really busy day. So for taking the time to speak today is like really like you're amazing. You're incredible. Thank you. Okay, so on to our next segment um, for today. Uh, I, Louisa, if on the top right you see there's a leave button, you can just click it. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Um, so uh, we are a little bit ahead of schedule, and that's actually really perfect. Um, because I do want to give some people some time after the segment is over to just review um, how they want to practice lobbying and how they might want to uh, organize their meeting. But before we do, um, we're not done yet.
So you heard from Benjamin, who obviously everyone um, applauded him as well for his incredible poem. But we also have another social worker who's also a poet share, um, coming on with us today as well to share her poem. Um, and her name is Shirley. Uh, and I don't want to butcher your last name, Shirley. So I'll, I'll leave it to you to pronounce it. Um, but she's going to be sharing her poem with us today. And I'll, I'll let you go. Hi everyone, my name is Shirley Sheryls Rejoice and I am gonna be performing my original poetry today. My poem today is called The Home of the Brave. So it goes, Martin had a dream. Decades later, Colin took a knee. It's crazy how times change, but we still fighting for equality. The world we live in, it ain't nothing new. History repeats itself like a person with OCD, racism, more like a sickness without a cure, genetics. Is it hereditary or is it learned? That is the question. Welcome to America, the home of the brave, a place where the president lives in a house built by slaves. Same DNA generations later would advocate for change. Not all heroes wear capes, but one thing's for sure is that all heroes are brave, brave enough to be selfless in a pandemic of hate. How we cope with COVID will determine our fate. Numbers increasing, overly worked. Last time I seen my body, last time I seen my family, body was leaving in a hearse. State of emergency, global crisis, numbers of black people dying keep rising. Justice is what we need. Hear our voices as we plead. Why does something need to go viral in order to be taken seriously? Now let's take it back to liberty and justice for all. W.E.B. Du Bois once said, a system cannot fail those it was never meant to protect. So I sit back and reflect, how can the justice system fail us? How can there be justice when the justice system's blueprint was set up to watch us fail? You know, all criminals are usually identified as black males. Immigrants are just here to take our jobs. We depend on the Chinese for technologies but use xenophobic slurs and continues to promote misogyny. You see, I just imagine a world where there's no racism, just unity. But in reality, that's just fiction, such scrutiny. I snap back into reality and they still don't understand. They try so hard to get rid of good health care to please Uncle Sam. They complain because during the anthem, people refuse to stand, but they still don't see the bigger picture. I wonder what the forefathers had in mind when they signed their signatures because it's 2021 and real history is still kept out of literature. Who is really man and who wasn't? Because it's clear to see who has their rights and who doesn't. Still marching for equal pay, yet still trying to demonstrate Martin's love for equality each day. Welcome to the home of the brave. Thank you so much, Shirley. I just think that was powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, there's power in your words, there's truth to your words. I'm so happy that you could come on and share your poem and your words and your voice. That was incredible. Um, and just Thank you so much. No, of course. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much. And I welcome you to join us for the rest of the event as well. Um, and so that was our last um, poem. And before I wrap up our opening remarks and then open our stage to other events and sessions, I just want to first um, thank everyone who did join us today. I think I've said it multiple times before, but I really am so grateful that so many social workers across the country are willing to join us and engage in the democratic process. I know when I first started in the social work field, I thought I was the only one interested in policy and I thought clinical was the only way to go, but seeing this network of incredible social workers who are out there also doing civic engagement or political work, that's incredible. And I'm so excited to network with everyone today. Um, and I've received a couple of emails from some of you saying that you're almost nervous to speak to the congressional staffers or, you know, this is a little intimidating. And I want to be here to say it is intimidating sometimes and it is a nerve wracking experience. I've been nervous so many times, but that's OK. That's the point of student advocacy. This is your time to experience that, um, how it is like to lobby, how it is like to advocate for these issues you feel is important to these elected officials and know that there's power in your voice and not theirs. 
you are always electing them into office, the power lies in you. And I feel like sometimes it's not affirmed enough. So I'm here to say, don't be nervous. This is your time. And mistakes are okay. We're human. We are going to make it. But what matters is that your message reaches them. And if you don't make a change, know that you planted that seed. And that's important as well, because when you plant that seed, there's bound to be change. Even if it's not today, it will be in a couple of years or even a decade later. And I just want to let everyone know who is going to be meeting with a congressional staffer today that your voice matters and don't be intimidated. Um, and if you do have any questions, our incredible student leadership team here today planned such an amazing event. Um, and if you have any questions, do reach out to us as well. And I know Natalia gave a quick overview of today, but I just want to reiterate what we have planned today so that everyone is kind of on the same page. Um, also, Shirley, if you can, you can press the, the top right button, leave. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, uh, our next event that's going to be happening on the stage is actually going to start at 1.30. And Stacey Baxter, who's um, our team, who's one a member of our team, is going to be doing a quick social media raid because there's power in social media as well. And from there, we're going to have Monica Soto, who is also a team leader, and Taylor Brown uh, do a quick panel on the role of social work and democracy. And so for the, from 2 to 3 p.m., they're going to be hosting that conversation. And then from 3 to 4, we'll have Justin Hodge, who's a Chris Board Director, um, County Commissioner in Michigan, and also political social professor, talk about what is political social work. And for anyone who's registered, I'm sure you've answered the question, are you interested in a political social work career? And some people have said yes, some people have said maybe, and some have had said no. But for many of us, we just don't know what that career can look like for us because we're constantly told social work is kind of like a micro field. And although micro and meso and macro intersect, there's a place for us in the political field. So Justin Hodge will be exploring what a political social work field looks like. Um, and then from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. is the networking session. And we did not include any other sessions at that time, only for networking, because one of our huge assets is to network. And I see that Marissa and a couple of others have already been connecting on WhatsApp, which is incredible. Um, and we just want to create a space where people can really meet everyone from across the country, because we have students from across the country joining us today. Um, so from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. will be the networking session. Um, and then on the side where you see the expo, Abigail Martin and her campaign staff will actually be available um, to meet with students from 1 to 2.30 p.m. So if anyone is on the radar to want to meet with a social worker who's running for office, I really encourage you to keep that in mind that from 1 to 2.30 p.m., Abigail Martin will be um, at this virtual booth um, ready to meet with students. And then from 3 to 4 p.m., we have Trisha Shimamura, who was a person that um, uh, Louisa had mentioned also. So she'll be uh, doing, she'll be meeting with students from 3 to 4 p.m. as well. And I see Dr. Lewis had asked, how does networking work? I'd mentioned it before, um, but networking is, so, the networking feature within Hopin is actually like a speed dating version. And Elle Corkery and Laura K uh, Kun, who's Yes, I am speaking in EST. I apologize if I didn't clarify. So all of our timing is in EST. Um, I can't do quick maths to figure out what the PST version is. Um, but yes, thank you so much. Um, so the, a networking session is like a speed dating session. And we have two of our team leaders who will be facilitating that. And Elle and Laura, if you're in the chat, you can just put your name out there. I see Laura did as well. Yeah, so they will be helping you during the networking session. Um, but it's like a speed dating part where you get to meet with folks for 90 uh, seconds. And you get to connect with them, let them know where you're from, what you're interested in. You can connect with each other on LinkedIn if your LinkedIn is connected to your Hopin user profile. Um, and then you can just, if you're interested, you have a great conversation, you can extend that conversation. If you are, un, if you don't want to continue that conversation, you can just continue on and be matched with someone else. 
And yes, for anyone who was uh, connected with Representative Sicily, I do want to apologize um, that we had confirmed the appointment, but unfortunately they had another urgent meeting come up and their times conflicted with the appointment time we made with them. Um, so they had to cancel, but that's okay because we have really incredible social workers who are joining us today to meet with you and help you practice lobbying and advocacy. And Angelique Day is actually one of them. I saw uh, as I mentioned in the chat. Um, so you can also meet with them. They're all really incredible social workers. So please feel free to uh, connect with any of them during the sessions. And I think I went over everything we are um, going to do today. And from five to six, we do have a debriefing session. Uh, so for anyone who was able to lobby to an office, we just want to be here to debrief, talk about what the experience was like, uh, process through if it was intimidating, was it scary, was it helpful? Do you think you made a change, anything like that? Um, so that's going to be happening from 5 to 6 p.m. And our next event is going to start at 1.30 p.m. It is 11.40. I know some folks do have to log on at 12.30. Um, if you are meeting with uh, Representative Butterfield, Senator Hirona, Representative Karen Bass, or Councilwoman Emily Jabour, you have to log into that Zoom link that was emailed to you at 12.30 p.m. And this is so you have at least 30 minutes to organize with the rest of your team um, to plan out how you want to advocate to the person you will be meeting. So I just want to remind everyone who is going to be meeting at 12.30 to log on then. And then if you are meeting with Representative Caroline to log on at 2 p.m. and then Yvette D. Clark to log on at 2 p.m. as well. And if you are meeting with Representative Bar Barbara Lee, you will be logging on at 3 p.m. I know I spoke really quickly. All this information is on the website as well if you scroll down. And I think some of the organizers have been sharing the link in the chat. I'll post it here again as well. Um, so that's it for me today. Take. Um, the break that we have right now from 11.40 to 1 to grab lunch, to get ready, to prepare, do the research, and then come join us back in at 1 p.m. for all the events we have planned today. And thank you so much. I hope everyone has a great day today.